Dear friends, hello and thank you very much for watching me and I hope you are enjoying this lovely summer. So in today's video, I would like to talk to you a little bit about some of the aspects of jazz bass soloing. I remember I had promised this a while ago and then uh, I'm getting quite a number of requests to talk about this, so there we go. Now, uh, I was a little bit wary in starting to do this video because it's a really big topic and it's a constant work in progress. So I'm like all of us, I'm continuously learning and uh, continuously trying to amend a little bit some of my ways. So please uh, do not think that what I'm saying is like the truth, also that the truth doesn't exist, you know, it's different for each of us. But Nonetheless, I'll try to share with you some of my views and I hope you'll find them useful. So, as of course we all know, uh, the way you sound, uh, it depends on a number of factors. So first of all, it's both right hand and left hand, because left hand can do really a lot in forming, shaping up the sound. But uh, I'm not going to discuss this uh, right now, maybe at some point later. Then, of course, if it's a gig, depends on the amplification, uh, on the venue acoustics, um, lots depends on the setup, as we already know. And uh, last but not least, somehow our hands normally tend to try and replicate the type of sound we have in our head. I'm not sure how it works from the physiological standpoint, but that's how it is. That's what I keep discovering. Okay. So, uh, let's look at some of the right hand technique aspects. There are a few nuances we have to bear in mind. The first one is the position of your right hand on the fingerboard, how high or how low it is. The second is the angle at which you actually pluck, so from this to this. Third is the point on your finger with which you do pluck. So it could be side surface, it could be a fingertip, it could be something a little, little bit deeper than the fingertip. Fourth, how much of the arm weight you apply, if any, and how light or heavy your touch in general is and whether there is any kind of force or other power that you apply to your fingers and how many fingers you actually use. Of course it always makes sense to do some sort of mix and match and use different methods within the same solo just choosing them uh, depending upon your current musical goals. But anyhow, let's uh, look at these uh, techniques sort of one by one. So, if you want to play a slow and intense melodic solo, you could uh, get away with using just one finger and uh, the position of your right hand could be fairly similar to that uh, when you comp and you would use the side surface of your finger. Now, another thing you can do, you can actually involve your second finger and that would give you a little bit more flexibility. As you may have noticed, the movement is this, 
But still, what I was doing now sounds fairly traditional. And if we want to uh, enhance it a little bit, we may want to use also, occasionally use the third finger. Now, you know that I always try to emphasize that our technique uh, should be as natural as possible. So, look, I place my hand on the fingerboard like this, and my first finger is basically touching the G string, second is on the D, and the third is on the A. Why don't we make good use of it? What I mean to say that the third is needed mainly to bounce off a lower string. So again, slower. So you see, I'm always bouncing off the lower string. Now, our sound also pretty much depends on uh, how firm our fingers are, not tensed up, but firm, and whether we use the fingertips or a um, slightly softer surface. I, myself, tend to use mainly fingertips uh, because it's less noisy and gives a more, you know, accurate accurate sound and as you may have noticed I tend not to keep my hand at a 90 degree angle because I find that it causes a little bit of strain here plus somehow it is more noisy I mean the a noise that the string would produce uh, hitting the uh, fingerboard another uh, crucial aspect uh, is, you know, that I'm saying we need to keep our fingers firm, but we have to be able to, and this is really difficult, to very well calculate the amount of pressure we apply, because, you know, in the heat of the concert, we may get emotional, or maybe if we even don't hear ourselves too well, and then we start to force it and uh, your, all your technique will collapse. So we have to keep this constant control over our emotions, which is extremely difficult, and uh, deliberately select our touch, whether it's something really light or it's something more substantial. Light it could be no. Obviously, it's not, you know, a solid sound, but still, there is what I want to say that there is a, a range. Another aspect that I have mentioned before is the position of your hand. So, if for a slow soloing that I demonstrated in the beginning of this video, it's sufficient, actually, good to keep your sound here so it produces nice, powerful tone. Uh, for faster uh, playing, I tend to keep my hand higher and then I do not use the weight of the arm which I actually do not need because I need a light touch. Now um, I'd like to give you also a um, few exercises concerning this multi-finger technique. So the first and the simplest one is try and play uh, one note with two fingers. When you do this, what is important is that uh, it's very rhythmical, uh, so that it doesn't oscillate. To help this, you may want uh, to play you know, some figures like, let's say, quadruplets, using the same fingering. Now the next uh, stage would be to achieve the independency between your right hand fingering and your left hand fingering so that you're able to play say a chromatic scale with this two finger scheme. Right? 
Okay, now, uh, as with your third finger, you just bounce off. You do not really need it that much, but if you are curious and uh, curious enough, you know, to evolve more, I could suggest you yet another exercise that I used to do a lot as a student. So it is some sort of a circular uh, scheme, which is three, two, one, two. Right? Now, uh, to be more precise than this, you can also train yourself to play figures like quadruplets, triplets, quintuplets, but always with the same fingering. And then eventually, a chromatic scale or anything else. But bear in mind that you will not really need to use a three fingers on the same string. I'm sure you have also noticed that there is a yet another trick that I use very extensively, not only me, many, many players do that, is to tie notes. This is also a very uh, valid tool and uh, obviously it is perfectly valid also for more traditional playing that I've been showing to you uh, towards the beginning. Okay, uh, this is it for now. I really hope it can uh, shed some light on some of the soloing aspects and next time maybe we'll talk about uh, what your left hand can do in the meanwhile. And for now, thank you very much for watching me. And of course, again, you know, I really appreciate all your feedback, be it a critique, be it anything, a suggestion, a question. And of course, whenever uh, I can, I answer. And if I do not reply quickly, that means that I probably have not seen your comment yet. But I do try my best. Thank you very much. Have a nice day and see you next time.